I know very few people that weren't crying mm. for a long time. I don't mean like had a little bit of a tearful. People were sobbing hours later. They were sobbing about other things. I guess it just brings up, it felt like there was a release of pent up emotion to a certain extent. And also, um, bringing back who knows what you know a, 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 a boiling bubbling pot of all the other emotions that maybe you know living through a similar experience with a loved one that's no longer here remembering a childhood remembering uh, yeah I, I, I you know I don't know yes. it, Lots Who of, doesn't lots, identify lots of, lots. with a team? Your team winning is one of the loveliest things ever. Sure. That I think everyone who supports uh, football or supports a team. And this was just uh, epic. It was such a tense, long, drawn-out, good game of football. Mm. It just felt like who wasn't going to go, oh, yes. Yes. Argentina. <laughs> Uh, I can it, it it would very easily bring up lots of overwhelming things, as you said, childhood, lost loved ones, sense of connection, uh, and who knows what other things were going on. Who did you watch the game with? So I watched with uh, uh, my sister and my brother and my nephews, my sister-in-law, the dog who came uh, with a with an Argentina strip. Um, and, and some friends. But we we watch other games at a cousin's house whose baby was a bit poorly. So at the last minute, we decided to kind of split split into two viewing households, which was already so fraught and full of tension. I thought, oh my god! You know, people say families make um, Christmas makes family tense, hmm. but th- this was like a you know a million Christmases in one. Loads of people uh, not daring to watch it in any sort of different circumstance than the than the previous game. So I know a guy who was on his own for the second match because I don't know something happened, and and so he watched every game alone just in case it jinxes because the first game he lost and so on. But shortly after, I mean, it, it was a long game. It drew out, and then. You know, people I think needed to come down a little bit, but within an hour, there was just so many people pouring out into the streets, and we went out, and it was just amazing. It really was so sunny and warm, and you know, street party spirit. Very quickly, I mean, we were not near the centre of town, and those incredible scenes you see were there pictures, but even so, there was no. You see people as far as the eye goes, clad in white and blue, every street corner completely packed. You can't, you know, can't see. There's no horizon. It's just people. Yeah, I saw drone shots to that effect and they're incredible. And I I don't know if you've seen the video doing the rounds on social media of somebody uh, cycling through Buenos Aires at the moment. The winning penalty is kicked. And the last penalty, yes, of course. It's fantastic, isn't it? Oh, the, the noise. Like if you didn't know it was joyous noise, it would be terrifying because it just arrives <laughs> like a wall and hits the person who's cycling through empty streets and uh, pandemonium. I mean, I can only imagine. Yes, well, the penalty shootout definition has that. Uh, you know, that kind of it has a final moment, um, which is very dramatic. Mm. You, you know. Because otherwise it's just a final whistle and you don't know and action stops. But with this, it's like something happens. But yeah, I, gosh, if I never have to watch penalty shootout again, I'd be a happy person. And one How of the, tense. Well, it, it, with Argentina in particular, maybe more so than any other team in world sport, let alone uh, football, uh, the tears run so freely and, and, and for such a, a life-defining moment for lots of players, and this is a life-defining moment, uh, it's just a compelling thing even to watch as a as a neutral and an absorbing thing to watch as a neutral, uh, no more so than Angel Di Maria, who 
I think he was crying when things were going well and he was crying when things were going badly and was just not in control of himself. And, you know, it's it's um, it's it's almost hard to understand how uh, the players keep any kind of composure in, in, when there's that atmosphere in the group as a whole. They seem to, clearly, but it's uh, they, they are a, a particularly emotional bunch, it would seem. I think it's been a particularly emotional World Cup for Argentina and that there's been some interesting kind of pieces of writing about that shared mood between uh, fans and team and the you know the management group as well as the players and and like everyone's up and down together and crying with relief or crying with joy or crying with uh, happiness, but it, from that very first game that I think Argentina did kick off the tournament slightly overconfident, and by Argentina, I mean the, the, the squad and the general mood in the country was a little bit like, we're going to win the World Cup, and uh, and it was such a, you know, disappointment. It was such a, you know, punch in the face, kind of come down to a sobering um realization that maybe not but ever ever since that game every game has been a potential last performance mm. on the on the big stage so it's, been, it's been fraught throughout fraught to the very end yeah. practically every game i mean i think the semi the semi final was maybe the the most relaxed uh, of them all mm. but even so it was so you know so every time you've got this you know, there must be like a, a physical explanation what goes on in the body when you've, you've got so much anticipation and anxiety and nerves. People weren't sleeping. Everybody was nervous. Um, but at one point, mid-tournament, or not even mid-tournament, I think early on, they all just wept. So I think it was when Argentina advanced the group games that it was Pablo Aymar, who was Scaloni's assistant, yeah. that was convulsing on the on the bench and uh, Scaloni said, look, we all need to, I mean, I include myself, but we all need to turn it down a notch because it's just a game of football. Right, I, miss, I missed him and saying anyway, that, that's so interesting. It was, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Sure. He said, well, I really think we need to remember this is just a game and we're all, you know, my brother ran from Argentina saying he couldn't stop crying, he couldn't watch and, it, what's going on? What's going on? You know, we've, and then Luis Enrique, the Spanish manager, when he when Spain got knocked out, he said Argentina need to turn it down and not just too much pressure there. Mm. So I think everybody's like, and I don't know why it matters so much to anybody because ultimately it doesn't really matter that much. And I, you know, we were talking about that yesterday and today quite a lot here. Like, it, uh, I mean, now there's still a little sense of build up and people are waiting for the players to arrive back and so there's still you know a bit of frenzy but after that it's back to daily life and reality and mm. no one's no one's reality will have been altered in any way apart from the, the players themselves and for them we are happy obviously but what you're saying about this uh and in Di Maria's case, I think he's had a very long stint, and for him, it was as important as for Messi, probably, because he this will have been his last World Cup, and he's been close, but not quite there. He's been criticised quite a lot uh, in the past. I think these players have suffered, yeah, um, have suffered this burden of, of you know people wanting them to win so badly. Well, there's... so that's probably part of the release. Yeah, and and. So I mean, there's so many layers to it. There's, there's that that fraud element because they lost the first game throughout. So every every moment could have been disastrous potentially. So that's a <laughs> that is a fraught way to spend uh, several uh, weeks as a footballer and as a football fan. There is the the messy aspect and what he means to Argentina and how I think in the last couple of years in particular he has become more Argentinian and been embraced more by Argentina. And this was his last chance uh, to turn an iconic career into something even more stratospheric. And I saw Paredes uh, saying in advance of the game the weekend that he would feel happier for Messi to win a World Cup than he would feel for himself to win a World Cup. Now, that is, unu <laughs> that is unu an unusual thing 
for players to say and more unusual yet for players to genuinely mean and I do think he meant it and even at the when the winning penalty was kicked he started to run yeah. towards the, the, the kick taker who won the World Cup as would be customary and after three steps he turns around and collapses on Messi and all the other who, players who are about to sprint to the winning kick taker they turn and they collapse on Messi um, so again like there, there's just there was more at play here than in your usual tournament so wait, what more can be said of Messi and, and, and this moment Marcella? Well, I think I mean I think the uh, wanting to win it for Messi is is a huge part of being part of the, of Messi's team. You know, I think the um, y- y- you know the the identity of the squad as as Messi's squad is is huge. And a lot of people wanted Messi to win the World Cup, even non Argentines. A lot of football lovers around the world felt he was due a uh, World Cup, and 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 I know. Well, from watching all sorts of reactions and reading about it, but also from the amount of interest that I, I, I get from far-flung places about Messi winning the World Cup rather than Argentina. The celebration, I, I don't know. I mean, it's interesting when Argentina got through after beating the Netherlands that went to penalty and everyone went to celebrate to a corner with the fans and hug each other. Messi's the one that runs towards that and then turns to go to Diva Martinez and um, finds, you know, the lone goalkeeper hero. And uh, Diva also said, uh, oh, yeah, um, I I don't care at all about me being a hero. I don't care about any of this. I just wanted to win it for the team and for Argentina. So there's this sense that everyone's doing it for someone else, (laughs) which is quite nice. I can see why everyone wanted to do it for Messi because I think the way the 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 football project um, that was constructed was about being a team for Messi, you know, so that he could have uh, be or be his best self. I I think that was very much the objective. So you would want to see that pay off, you know. It, I I have no idea what the actual discussions are in you know in the drawing room or it's, but to me it's very clear that this was you know we are a team for Messi to thrive in and that's um, that's clearly what happened and what they became and so I think a lot of the tears are from Scaloni and Aymar again and uh, our tears of having managed something so kind of challenging yet from having an idea that worked I think that's a really nice feeling for people you know thinking I know I'll do this and then it does work and and it's almost a kind there's a relief but also almost sort of an element of surprise and you can see that I think in their faces and and then a lot of rhetoric about wanting it for the Argentinian people and then bringing it home and it was a rather nice moment when one of the players had the cup and a journalist said, can I touch it? And um, the player said, of course you can touch it. It's yours as well. You know, it was really very moving. Yeah. Has there been, uh, as a curiosity, has there been much comment on the fact that Messi was sporting uh, black bisht with gold trim at this iconic moment of lifting the World Cup? Well, well, we couldn't really hear the commentary. I mean, I saw it was a bit of a thing online. Um People did say, what's that? Uh, but I, I mean... No sense of outrage that the badge was covered up. Uh, no, I think some people thought it was a bit naff. And, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I did see there was a much more of a, of a raucous about it. I guess it is a bit naff. Um, <laughs> the, yeah. <laughs> I think the, the Argentina shirt without that would have been more impactful I was kind of slightly surprised that it was covered up but a lot for example on Messi kissing the cup as he walks past mm. it and um, a lot on Messi's words and or the way they all went for their children and wives in the stat you know there's this this whole emotional narrative and epic kind of 
unison and 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 them also saying the fans are the best in the world and without the fat you know thinking the fat at this kind of two-way f- flow of positive energy and support and mm. um is so tied to the emotional trip that the you know the niceties of in fact i didn't even hear any comments about the ceremony itself for example which usually you do a bit but yeah i guess you um, guys ultimately you guys have more yes. important things to enjoy on the the fans aspect i think one of the defining memories a lot of people will have of this very strange world cup is that it felt like argentina were playing in home matches right the way through and it was such an advantage like they were being willed across the line by these stadiums just full of argentinian fans more Argentinian fans than any other fan base right across the tournament. Why did they travel in such numbers? Has that been discussed? Do they always travel in, in those kind of numbers? Because they outnumbered absolutely everybody. I was wondering if that was a, a last push at getting Messi over the line, perhaps. Or, or... Well, it, yeah, it might have been. I don't think they outnumbered uh, the Saudi fans in the first game. <laughs> okay, well, that, I guess a less <laughs> arduous journey show. maybe for Saudi Arabia. But but in the, in yeah, the main, of any fans loud. who had to travel. And I know immediately after that, there were concerted efforts to at least gather all Argentinian fans together in the same bit of the stadium and ignore ticket numbers and just try and huddle up together. There were a lot of fans supporting Argentina that weren't Argentinians, but that, that was quite, an, uh, uh, that's a novelty and it's become quite a story here, you right. know, that uh, it's Southeast Asian and, uh, well, the Arab world and North African fans that, that really, really support Argentina a lot. And then there were there were increased charter flights um, just this last week. Right. So I think from, you know, quarter final and certainly to four semi and for final there were increased the national airway Aerolíneas Argentinas put up extra flights um I don't I I don't know how expensive they were I suspect a lot of the fans there are people who can afford to travel some clubs had did take organized groups of supporters um they got you know as you progress through a World Cup, you get more ticket allocation for your FA. And generally, it's kind of quite complicated to get hold of them, and it's always a bit of a, of a fracas. And I think it was no different this time in the Argentina camp in Doha. But, you but if you know, some clubs or um, organisations can, can bid for them and maybe get hold of them. But I guess, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. The people I know who were there were had had bought the tickets in the draw early on with the standard promotions and so on, and, and, that, and that is super expensive. Uh, and there's also a lot of Argentinians that live abroad uh, in Europe or, well, in, in the Gulf region. There were a lot of local uh, lo- local Argentinians um who you know appeared on telly and so on where they're living there what they're doing so i think argentinian fandom is something that um maybe goes beyond being an argentine national or born in argentina i mean there's also some really nice threads compiled online about celebrations in different parts of the world and i'm quite impressed to see trafalgar square in central london was pretty loud with uh, the same songs and blue and white flags. So, you know, it's it's interesting. Some mm. there's obviously a mix of people that like supporting Argentina and Messi, of course. Yeah. So there's a lot of Messi fans rather than Argentina fans. Well there is that too. There is that too. Um I suspect a memorable uh, few days coming up in Buenos Aires. So thank you so much for joining us throughout the tournament. It's been much appreciated, Marcella. Good to talk to you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I, yes, I'm like Dugo Martinez. I didn't do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Marcella Mora Irahu on the line with us there.